Let's start by answering the question as succinctly as possible. Iceberg is in an increasingly popular open data lakehouse table format. Now, if you looked up what Iceberg is, you probably don't understand what that means yet, but by the end of this video, you should. We're gonna to need to start with some context though, because a data lake house is the answer to two older technologies, the data warehouse and the data lake. One of the oldest concepts in big data storage and analytics, the data warehouse should hopefully be a familiar concept to most viewers who stumbled their way into this video. A data warehouse is a home for structured, analytics-ready data optimized for queries and business intelligence. A well-maintained, organized, centralized data warehouse that stores most of an organization's data has long been the North Star for a data engineering team. The struggle is that structuring all of your data to fit within a warehouse is a massive and messy task. And because it generally requires your data to go through an ETL process, it can lead to duplication of data, cause delays on when new data is accessible, and limit flexibility. Perfectly maintaining a data warehouse is a never-ending, expensive, and time-intensive challenge. Not maintaining a data warehouse well enough can reduce access to data or leave the entire thing useless. There is still time and place for data warehouses, but the flaws involving cost, scalability, and maintenance have been a pain point for as long as data warehouses have existed. A reaction to the headache that comes from maintaining a rigorous, structured data warehouse, the data lake takes the opposite approach. Huck all the data into a lake. It's what it sounds like. By storing the data in its native format, you lose the headache and cost of massive ETL workloads and you greatly simplify your data stack. The downside is that your data becomes a bit of a mess. In order to query a data lake lacking structure, your queries need to get more sophisticated and complicated, requiring more advanced data science skills and tools to manicure the data from unstructured storage to meaningful analytics and insights. You're not getting rid of the task of reshaping the data, you're pushing it downstream to your data scientists and analysts. If the shape and format of your unstructured data meanders or drifts over time, supporting and handling all the edge and legacy cases without transforming the data can become a headache or borderline impossible, leaving you with more of a data bog, swamp, or quagmire. You don't want that. What if we took the benefits of both the data warehouse and the data lake? Maintain the flexibility of being able to store unstructured data when it makes sense, but be equally willing to apply some structure and rigor to the data that needs some extra attention. Like a data lake, a data lake house is intended to capture all of your data in a single low-cost cloud object store, while the house part enables transactions, transformations, and restructuring of data with asset properties to glean the many benefits of a traditional data warehouse. There's no concern of data duplication, and with some active maintenance, old data shouldn't become unintelligible or require massively complicated queries to understand. Data lake houses store a lot more metadata, enabling record keeping, records of all transactions, and the power to roll back or look at snapshots of data in the past. This does introduce complexity, especially if you're trying to build a lake house from scratch, which is why many companies are trying to sell lake house solutions to save data teams the headache. So what's Iceberg? Originally built at Netflix and designed from the ground up to pair with Trino as its compute engine, it was an answer to a hive data lake where transactions were not atomic, correctness was not guaranteed, and users were afraid to change data for risk of breaking something. Even when they did change data, because Hive necessitated rewriting entire directories, writes were inefficient and painfully slow. When you can't modify your data, change your schemas, or write over existing data, you quickly begin to realize all of the downsides of a data lake, and the data swamp rears its ugly head. So, enter manifest files, more metadata, and bada bing, bada boom, problem solved. Yes, that's a gross oversimplification, but the reality is that Iceberg's introduction proved that transactions in a lake house could be safe, atomicity could be guaranteed, and snapshots and table history were bonuses that came along for the ride. Instead of sorting tables into individual directories, Iceberg maintains lists of files. Metadata files keep track of table state, and manifest files are tracked in manifest lists that store metadata about the manifest. Iceberg supports time travel via snapshots of the table in the past, which can be accessed by a manifest list which points to manifest files representing an older version of the table. On top of that, the format reuses manifest files when it can for files that remain constant across multiple snapshots. Otherwise, every single transaction is stored, tracked, and able to be accessed as part of a given snapshot. What makes it a table format is that it's specifying how and where and in what shape these files should be stored. The specification and standard are open source, but Iceberg delegates tasks like creating, dropping, and renaming tables to what's called a catalog. There are different implementations of Iceberg catalogs, some open, some proprietary. There's a ton of extra complexity to Iceberg working as great as it does. You can read the Iceberg spec or our blog explaining Iceberg architecture, both linked in the description for more detailed information. And uh, happy burging. That's what they say, right? That's when you, happy burging? Yeah, okay.